Screen calibration is one of those topics that I know is important, but it's not something I do very frequently or ever. <laughs> I've always assumed that the displays that I buy are calibrated out of the box, so the colors on the screen are natural as long as I do, don't use any custom color settings. In the back of my mind, I know that probably isn't true, but I don't have a way to calibrate my monitor to say otherwise, so I just usually stuck with the default settings. For years. <laughs> I've never color calibrated my monitors and I've actually purchased pre-color calibrated ASUS monitors before to get around doing this. I've also used my MacBook Pro screen as the source of truth when it comes to colors. The fact of the matter is, screens change from time to time and they never stay calibrated forever, if they're even calibrated right out of the box. I have a few different monitors and in this video we're going to calibrate them and show you how each of the monitors including my MacBook Pro screen and pre-calibrated ASUS screens kind of aren't really exactly as calibrated as you might think. This video was prompted by Datacolor and their Spider X Elite. The company emailed me and asked me if I'd like to review one of their Spider X Elites and as soon as I got that email I thought about a comment I got a few months ago asking how they can match the colors from their monitor to their phone to their Sony Bravia TV. And while I'll touch on that a little bit later, as soon as Data Color reached out to me, I said I would love to review one. And as always, the company has not seen this video before posting. They did not tell me to say anything or not say anything about the product. They did not pay me to make the video and these words are all my own. There will be affiliate links in the description if you would like to learn more and support my channel though. Okay. Starting off with my MacBook Pro. I thought my MacBook was as close to as color accurate as you could get. Since it's a laptop screen, it should be showing the exact colors that the laptop is telling it to show. But let's walk through the process of calibrating the screen and show you just exactly how wrong my assumption was. To start, we're going to need to open our box and go to the URL on this card. There are different models, so the Spider X Elite will be shown on the screen right now, but this will be whatever is in the card on the top of your box. So once we go to this page, it tells us to warm up our monitor for 30 minutes, ensure no direct light is falling on our monitor, reset the monitor to factory settings, and disable the auto brightness. On a Mac, go to displays, and then make sure you're on a default profile. Next, we'll download, install, and activate the software. I've already activated my Spider X Elite, but it's a really simple process. Just start up the software, plug it in, and input your serial number, and you're done. Next, we'll plug in the Spider X Elite to the computer and start the software. If you have more than one monitor, like I'll show you later, the software will detect which monitor you're calibrating. Mine showed up as a generic name on my Windows computer. Uh, I renamed it to something more recognizable to me, which was helpful. But if you want to switch monitors, selecting a different monitor from the dropdown in the software will go to that monitor to calibrate. After selecting what kind of display you are going to calibrate, it will go through a step-by-step -step process of what we said before, warming up lighting conditions, display controls, and the spider connection, which we've already done. So on the next screen, you can select what kind of LED backlight panel you have. There are different descriptions for each one. If you read one of those um, and you still don't know, I had to uh, Google one of my older screens uh, and it said right in the description of the product. For my MacBook Pros and most of my newer monitors, I've been using wide LED. So on the next page, it will say what workflow do you wanna do, step-by-step, -step, studio match, or expert console. Um, I've been using the step-by-step -step assistant and it's been working pretty well for me, so I am selecting step-by-step -step assistant here. This next screen is calibration settings and I've been doing full calibration and just leaving the defaults that they select that they recommended for me. So on the next screen is where we will have to place the actual device onto the screen. Depending on how large your screen is, you'll actually have to pull this cable through the lens cap to get the proper fitment of the device onto your screen. After a proper alignment, hit the next to start the calibration. It will check the brightness and then there will be flashing of different colors for about 30 seconds and that's it. The calibration is complete. You will be able to save the new profile after the calibration and after a few different monitors, I found that naming the monitor model number hyphen date was the most efficient to do this because 
uh, when you're renaming the screen, you'll notice that you can also select how often the software notifies you to recalibrate your screen. It's crazy to think I went years without calibrating my screen and the software wants you to do it every month. I left mine on a month and my next screen is going to be really satisfying because that is where you can toggle before and after the pre-calibration and the calibrated screen and see how different your screen actually was. After you're done toggling those back and forth, uh, to make sure your monitor is using the correct color profile, on a Mac, go to displays and then color and make sure that the profile that you just saved in the SpiderX software is selected. On Windows, just go to search and select color management and then select ICC profile and make sure that that is the profile that you just saved. And that's it. You now have a color calibrated monitor that is a pretty easy process. And it's nice to know that you have a fully color accurate monitor that is a true representation of the colors you want your final output to look like. I've previously calibrated my MacBook Pro display and my Windows PC display, but I also have ASUS ProArt displays that are the pre-calibrated monitors and an LG UltraWide that's supposed to have pretty accurate colors as well. And I've been using those monitors lately to have my truest source of colors, but I would love to see how color accurate they actually are after calibration. So let's go uh, calibrate those monitors really quick and I'll show you the before and after results. So here's my Windows computer and in the center we have my gaming monitor which probably needs some work and on the left and right hand side are my ASUS ProArt displays which I've been using for the source of truth for colors, contrast, and brightness on all of my designs and photos and videos. So I have eyeballed my center screen to try to best match the ProArt displays. I am interested to see how the center monitor holds up so let's turn off the lights and calibrate all these monitors and flip through the calibrated and uncalibrated profiles. So I'm not sure how well this will translate, uh, me filming my monitor and then putting it online and then how YouTube is sending it to your screen, but this is my right hand pro art monitor and we are looking at the uncalibrated view right now and now we are looking at the calibrated view. And it's interesting to see how saturated the calibration actually made the colors on this screen. Before this uh, looked natural to me and maybe it's just because my display is um, you know uh, probably six months old at this point so it might be getting more desaturated over time or something but uh, switching to the calibrated view all these colors just look a little bit more punchy that is my right pro art monitor Now we're taking a look at my left hand pro art monitor and this is the uncalibrated view and just like the right hand monitor uh, these colors look very similar they look uh, they looked fine to me before but after seeing the calibrated view of the other monitor they do look a little bit desaturated so let's see what this looks like and just as the right hand monitor uh, the uncalibrated view here uh, is a little more desaturated and switching over to the calibrated view, we now have more saturated, um, really all the colors are more saturated. Uh, it looks like the greens aren't maybe as affected as the right hand side, but that's getting really picky. The blues may be a little bit more on this monitor, um, but yeah, the bricks of the building and the peppers are real. The reds are really showing out to me on this monitor. So uh, it does look similar now that we're looking to the calibrated view as the other monitor. But now let's take a look at my center monitor. Now we're looking at my center gaming monitor and this is the one that I assume is going to change the most. Now we're looking at the uncalibrated view and let's check out the calibrated view. <laughs> and yes, it's a huge difference. Maybe it's the panel, maybe it's because this panel is much older than the other two panels so maybe age has something to do with it and the fact that it's a gaming monitor and not a color calibrated monitor uh, but the calibrated and uncalibrated view that I did the best to eyeball from my pro art monitors is a night and day difference. I'm happy that my center monitor is now calibrated just exactly like my pro art displays so I can use this to actually proof things now. 
Now that my Windows computer monitors are all calibrated, let's take a look at my Mac monitor. Let's uh, run the test and do the before and after. This is my LG display that's plugged into my MacBook and now we're looking at the uncalibrated view for this monitor and let's switch it over to the calibrated view and the uncalibrated view and the calibrated view have these very similar differences from my LG or my Asus ProArt monitors. The reds are much more saturated. Uh, the greens a little bit more saturated, but it seems like the blues are more saturated and have more contrast. This one kind of sat in the middle of my pre-calibrated ProArt displays and my gaming monitor. It wasn't quite as bad as my gaming monitor, but it wasn't quite as good as my pre-calibrated monitors. But I am glad to know that all of my monitors are looking the same now. It's crazy to see the difference in colors before and after the calibration. I used to view my videos and photos and designs on multiple different screens to see how they would look, but now I know that my calibrated screens are actually how the colors are going to look. Crazy concept. The Spider X Elite can also do projectors and you can dig into the settings of the app to do more fine grain adjustments. And it also lets you know how your monitor's colors are skewing over time. I haven't used any of these really advanced features, but I am interested in seeing how my monitor is going to change over time. I'm not really interested in digging into those really custom fine grain settings because I think the auto settings are good enough. In regards to the comment I received about making the colors match between a computer, a phone, and a TV, you can get close, but I don't think you'll ever be able to 100% match between all of these devices, especially with TVs and computer monitors. TVs and monitors seem to have a lot of custom color profile options and you may not realize you're using one and it can really throw your colors off if you're using the wrong one or one at all. Most of the time your movies will look more contrasty or saturated if you're using one of these profiles on a TV for example. Uh, even using displays at their stock or neutral settings, the color settings will be different based on device, backlight intensity, age of the display, and just so many different factors. It might seem like a daunting task to have your colors look the same on all devices, but it all does start with having a properly color calibrated monitor that you're creating the content on in the first place. The Spider X takes care of all that and it does it for you. So you can know that the colors on your monitor are correct. So what do you guys think of the Spider X calibrator? Will you be picking one up? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, check out some of my other videos and share them with a friend. If you didn't enjoy this video, share it with someone you don't like. Thanks for sticking around to the end and I'll see you in the next one.